Okay, so before we dive into this workshop, let me tell you about the assembly. The assembly is a smart lab based on N5 since December of 2014. We have successfully conducted over 300 workshops since. These workshops are divided into three categories. Half, which is embedded systems, Internet of Things, and hardware. Code, which is software projects, which relate to APIs, frameworks, and applications. And finally, we have data science, which is related to advanced topics such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. Our target audience for these workshops are students, professionals, and entrepreneurs, but most importantly, anyone who is eager to learn about technology. Our main focus here is on smart technology and practical applications. You can keep in touch with us through our forum at members.deassembly.ae. We are also active on social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube through the handles shown on the screen. So before going into the real code for building our cryptocurrency, first we're going to have to talk about what cryptocurrencies are, what a blockchain is, and the basics of cryptocurrencies. We are going to talk about why we should build our own cryptocurrency and then show you the how, how we're going to do, achieve that. All right, so what exactly is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrencies are basically the digital equivalent of fiat currencies that's implemented in, the, in a decentralized method. In other words, a cryptocurrency is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange using cryptography to secure the transactions and to control the creation of additional units of the currency. And for those of you who are, who are uncertain as to what cryptography means, it is basically the process of encrypting, encrypting the data between the blocks on the blockchain. So moving on to the blockchain, we keep hearing blockchain technology all over the place recently, but what exactly is it? If we look at the picture attached to the screen in front of you, you can get a, you can get a general idea of the concept behind the blockchain technology. It basically permits transactions to be gathered and recorded into blocks in chronological order. It also allows different servers on the chain to communicate with each other and exchange transactions. As illustrated in the figure, this differs to our regular centralized banking system in that there is no central node slash entity to control all of, all of our transactions, hence the decentralized nature of this technology, which is basically the backbone of the crypto world. All right, so basics of cryptocurrencies. What are the benefits of using these digital currencies and what are the downsides? Starting with the, with the advantages, cryptocurrencies are fast and secure. This means that, the tra that when transactions are made, they are done in a fast and secure manner. For instance, if a transaction is made, the only parties that are able to access the data that, that's being set, sent between them are the two parties in this transaction. Furthermore, cryptocurrencies also provide ease of use and are highly portable compared to to fiat currency or cash as we regularly know it. For example, carrying around 50,000 in cash is both, both risky and requires a suitcase, for example, to fit that amount. In contrast, uh, carrying a thousand or a million around in crypto wouldn't affect you or require you to go through the extra steps to protect and carry that amount around. It's just there on your uh, virtual wallet. In addition to that, the decentralized aspect we talked about previously due to the blockchain technology used in these cryptocurrencies provides an extra layer of security, anonymity, uh, anonymity knowing that there is no centralized entity controlling or having access to your transactions and account. In addition to that, cryptocurrencies are also known for their active user involvement. As stated before, the blockchain technology is made up of blocks. These blocks are created either by what is referred to as the mining process which means basically solving certain problems to create a new node in the chain. The difficulty of the mining process depends on the algorithms, algorithms set in place to be able to create that node. Saying that to say the user involvement in cryptocurrencies is very high when compared to regular banking schemes. One other advantage for cryptocurrencies would be that cryptocurrencies are also very secure from counterfeit currency flowing around which is still a big issue to this day in our regular currencies. Now, of course, just like any other thing, cryptocurrency is not just advantages, it also has its downsides. For example, just like any other digital entity, cryptocurrencies are also susceptible to possible hacks. Although highly unlikely, due to the high cybersecurity and integrity protocols put in place before you can publish a cryptocurrency, sophisticated hackers may be able to hack into the system. Another downside will be that the transaction costs now, transaction costs of cryptocurrencies may vary a lot depending on the platform you use for your transactions or the amount depending on the coin. For instance, transaction costs may be calculated depending on the, that specific coin you're using. Let's say a coin like Bitcoin wants to charge 0.1 Bitcoins for each transaction. Now, in Bitcoin, that's almost equivalent to 3,300 US dollars, unlike other coins in which the number would be much smaller. 
Moreover, cryptocurrencies also lack any kind of after sale services. This is due to the lack of centralized entity controlling the transaction. To put this in your perspective, this means that there is no such thing as asking for a refund from your bank, freezing the transaction, etc. Another downside would be the likelihood of scams due to the irregular nature of these transactions. Scams are a lot more likely to happen on cryptocurrencies rather than an irregular banking scheme, due to the, again, due to the lack of centralized entity that's overseeing the whole process. All right, now that we have an overview about cryptocurrencies, let's move to the topics of our workshop today, which is creating our own cryptocurrency. Now, as most of you know, the field of cryptocurrencies is ever expanding and is being considered as the replacement of what is commonly referred to as regular currency. I personally believe that these coins will become the future of our financial ecosystem, hence why being an early developer with your own contribution to the ecosystem while it's still in its growing stages will, great, will greatly increase your rewards later on. Now we go to the as to how we're going to achieve that. Well, the reason we are here today is that we're going to help you build your own cryptocurrencies using everyone's favorite language, Python. All right, and here we go. Time to start with the code. First, we're going to need what we're going to need first is to open your Python compiler. I'm personally going to use Jupyter Notebook. And yeah, let's go. All right, so let's start with our code on Jupyter Notepad. So first off, we're going to need to import two libraries for our code, the hashlib library, which is going to generate our hash numbers between the blocks, and the time library to keep track of the chronological uh, nature of the blocks themselves in the blockchain. Nice, that's done. And uh, since we're uh, going to be using the 256-bit hashing number calculator function from the hashlib library itself, let's make our lives easier and set it to a variable for a more seamless integration. So let's call it, set it to a variable. I'm going to call it hash string. And let's set it to hash lib dot sha256. Yep. And let's remove the capital letter. So we're, all the code is OK. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the real part of our code. Let's start off with a rough draft of what our code is going to look like. And uh, let's implement the methods that we're going to need. So let's start. So the first, class in our, the first class in our code is going to be the block class, which is basically the first the class that constructs and builds the first block in our blockchain. Let's call it class block. Now in this class, we're going to need multiple different functions to help it and methods to help it function. So the first function is going to be the instructor, the constructor, I'm sorry. Now that we are, we're going to have the constructor method of the class, we're also going to have a property that generates the hash number of the block from the values in the initializer. So property and define calculate let's call it the calculate hash this is our property we also have the another method that print, prints the data of the first block itself let's call it the block printing method all right now that that's done that's it for our first uh, class moving on to the second class of our uh, second class of our blockchain it's, it's going to be the blockchain class is it the one that's going to build the blockchain itself so let's call it the blockchain class. We also we're gonna have the constructor once again for the blockchain. It's going to initialize our blockchain. Let's call it the define. Let's set the constructor. And that once that's done, we're gonna have another uh, method, which is the build initial method, which is going to construct our initial block. So now the, let's do it. Let's call it the build build initial. We're also going to have another function, which is the build block function, and it's gonna it's gonna be the method it's, that's gonna going to build the blocks for us. So let's call it build block. We're also going to have 
a validity checker is going to be a static method and is used to ensure that the, the to make sure of the integrity and the security of the blockchain is up to par so it's going to be a static method as stated static method and let's call it the validity checker that's done let's well, uh, we, we, one more uh, one more method we're gonna have is the new transaction method is used to add the new data generated by the transactions themselves so one more method new transactions yep Fine. Well, we're going to have the proof of work static method further enhances the integrity of our blockchain by creating the difficulty in the creation of the new blocks which is in other words the mining difficulty so let's do it as a static function static function and it's, let's call it the proof of work perfect and one more so we're gonna need one more static function and it's going one gun up oh, static method not function sorry static method I messed up static method they are in classes yep. static method let's define it and this is going to be the verify method which checks if the hash number of the next block has four leading zeros i'll explain what that means later on while coding the functions implementing the functions the methods themselves and uh, we're going to also have another property which is the latest block pro property and it helps identify the last block of the blockchain and the last block is basically the current block of the blockchain so let's it's a property and let's call it the latest yep. uh, we go, uh, we're going to implement mining aspects in our cryptocurrency so we need to implement the class the mining the function function is going to implement the mining aspect of the coin so it's a just a regular function defining mining we're also going to have the create node function which creates new nodes for our blockchain so we're going to have the let's call it the create one more thing the obtain block object function let's we need the function that obtains the block objects and it uh, basically it ob it obtains the block object from the that that's being passed to it Now that we have an overview of our code and know what each of the methods are for, we can start implementing them and start with the hardcore coding. Let's start with this. Okay, let's start with our constructor for the class block. Uh, so the first, first what we're going to do is we're going to need to initialize. We're going to need to actually keep track of the relative locations of the block. So let's pass current. Let's give it its parameters first current yeah and let's which is current which is basically some people use use self i like to use current we need position let's keep track position basically keeps track of the relative location of the of the block in the blockchain itself we also don't need its mining number now mining number is the number created while creating a new block which is basically mining and we're going to need the previous hash number let's call it previous hash and the uh, previous hash basically keeps track of the previous hash number generated from the previous block we're going to need transactions now what transactions does is it uh yeah transactions basically keep tracks he keeps track of all the transactions that are happening on the block one more thing that we're going to need uh, the timestamp as we said the, from the library we implemented let's see stamp and this is equal to none 
So now that that's done, we, we have our um, parameters. Let's start implementing it. So as I as previously said, position keeps track keeps track of the relative location in the block of the block in the blockchain. So current dot position is equal to. We have current the mining number is equal to mining number. We also have current the previous hash is equal to previous hash. We have current transactions is equal to transactions. And we have the timestamp current dot times down is equal to times down. So once uh, so basically this is going to be our constructor for the block class, which is pretty simple, pretty basic, just initializing the parameters we have. Now moving on to the calculate hash property. Now the calculating hash property is going to have this current as its parameter and let's calculate the hash let's create a new variable let's call it block as string now setting up the block as string to hold the block information basically which basically like for example saving the data as string instead of you know having it as raw data so let's save it as a string of so we're gonna want to Three, four, five, five, and format them as pos position mining previous hash transactions and this stamp. So let's just copy it from here. Copy, paste. We have the current dot mining number it's mining number we have current dot previous hash we have current dot transactions and let's enter for the second one transactions then the last one we have is the timestamp current dot timestamp okay so our block of string is uh, done and now we need to return the value return let's return using the variable we created before which is the hash string with giving it the block or a string block a string and let's encode it dot hex digest hex digest function this way basically we are returning the 256 bit string of the block as string variable we have and we encode it into a hexadecimal digit this way our um, method is done let's go down to block printing and as we said what this does that basically just prints the block so let's return this okay so let's return it this 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 let's have five of them so yep one two three four five yes okay so that's done that's then formatted as the same thing we did right here so current uh, timestamp let's copy this and paste it right here perfect so having done that the uh, our um, class block is ready and all good moving on to our blockchain class this is going to our blockchain class so let's just space them out so it's easier for us to start implementing these methods let's pass the current as a parameter in our case we're gonna have current dot chain 
is equal to this uh, basically this keeps track of all the blocks on the blockchain we're going to have current let's call it current transactions yep. it's equal to and you guessed that this, this is going to keep record of all the transactions done on the block let's do the create current dot nodes and this is going to set equals to set and this is the setter for our nodes that we're going to be creating we have the current build initializer and this is basically a constructor or builder for the initial block of the in the class and the chain itself i guess i'm sorry in this chain okay all right so moving on to our build initial function let's uh, start by putting in the parameter which is going to be current we're going to have just current as our uh, parameter and since we're building the initial block we're going to current dot we're going to have the build block um, we're going to be actually setting the mining number to zero since it's our initial block mining number is equal to zero and our previous hash to zero since as i said it's our initial block hash is equal to zero so that's it for our build initial function just building the block and setting the mining number and its previous hash to zero now we're going to move on to our build block function passing on the parameters it's going to have the current it's going to have our mining number as well as our previous hash okay so in order to build the block we're going to be setting the position to be equal to the length of the blockchain which is basically doing this current now i'm actually going to start by initializing a variable current i'm going to have it equal to the setting the position equals to the length of our chain then we're gonna have set our mining number to our current mining number which is the same thing mining number we're also gonna be setting our previous hash to our previous hash we're also going to be setting our transactions to our current dot current core transactions yep. moving on we're going to uh, initialize the variable current dot current transactions since we didn't initialize it before so what it does is it's used to reset the transaction list on the node it's done to ensure that the future transactions are also added to the list will keep it will keep just repeating uh, continuously so current dot current underscore transactions is going to be equal to an empty array uh, furthermore we're going to have the um, current chain append which basically is going to join the newly built blocks to the existing blockchain so let's do it so current dot chain and then we're going to append them to the block all right and then we're just going to return our block return all right so this is our build block done let's move on to our static method the valid checker which is used to ensure that the integrity and the security of our blockchain is up to par so first off we need to make sure first off what we need to do is basically just simple it's just made of simple if statements so if previous hash number let's do it as the previous block so if the position of the previous block if previous block position plus one is not equal to our block position the current block position position return false 
So basically what that's meant to do is that it makes sure it, it makes sure that the position of the newly created block in the blockchain is needed to is indeed next to the previous block. If not, it's going to return false. Next on, we're going to make sure that the blocks are positioned correctly based on their hash values. If not, it's going to return false. So let's just make sure it's right. So if else if the previous block the ha the calculated hash number is not equal to our current block its previous hash number which is then you are going to return else if we are also going to call the verify functions to make sure to the verify function which we will code later on and it ju it's just there to make sure that the hash numbers are indeed in the correct order so else if not block in the verify of our blocks mining number our previous block and its mining number all right so then we're gonna have to do return what's as if, as if we need to check that the timestamp of our two consecutive blocks basically if the more recent block has a smaller timestamp than the previous one then that's just not in chronological order hence it, the validity of our blockchain has been compromised so we need to say that if our blockchain our blocks dot timestamp is less than or equal to our previous blocks timestamp then it's going to return oh it's about the return else none of these are satisfied it's going to return true all right so we're done with our validity checker um, function or method let's define our new transactions method so and what's new transactions so a new transaction is going to have current as a parameter it's going to have to have the rx amount which is basically now let's start with the transmit there's transmitter so tx that's uh, then going to have the receiver let's call him rx and it's going to have the amount that's being exchanged so yeah we have our parameters ready let's move on basically the function is used to add the new data into the transactions and let's start by yep so current current transactions and it's going to have the sender which is tx donated as tx it's going to have the receiver which is called rx and the amount being exchanged which is simply amount now that that's done we're going to have to we forgot yeah we forgot. yep we need to add the bracket here and the bracket at the end and then just return true so what this does is that it appends the data, the data being passed to the function from the transactions for example and for instance the sender's details the receiver's details as well as the amount transmitted and appends it to the current transactions list and it will return true when the new data has been appended so we have that done Let's move on to the proof of work, the static method. Now, what's proof of work? As we all know, the proof of work is a way to check the validity and, and creating a mining difficulty. So, proof of work is, yep. 
All right, so proof of work, it's going to have the, it's going to have the parameters last proof number. So let's just call it last proof, and it's going to have the proof number itself. Let's start by setting our mining number to zero. Then we're going to open a while loop. So while the block in dot verify, which is the function we're going to implement next, we're going to pass our mining number and we're going to pass our last proof. It's false. So while this is false, it's going to add to our mining number basically increment it by one then we're just going to uh it's false we need to add our columns and a little tab and return the mining number so basically what this does is that it sets the mining number to zero as part of an algorithm and to identify the number that allows the next hash number to have four leading zeros, basically. Then it enters the loop for uh, to look for the mining number that satisfies, satisfies the condition of the verify function, which is going to be basically the main concept is that the next hash num hashing number has four leading zeros. And then it returns the, the mining number that satisfies, that satisfies this specific condition. So moving on to the verify functions, which if you remember, we used twice before writing the code. So this is going to be nice. Let's do the last proof number. Yep. So last proof, proof. So to have these parameters and let's open, uh, initialize a new variable, just call it guess. If F. So it's going to be last proof. It's also going to have its proof number. And uh, yeah, Python. I just got this. Do this. Open these. And then just place it in the middle. Then we're going to have to encode them. Yep. So what this does is that it encodes the mining number and the one from the previous block and saves it to the variable guess. Then let's just do guess hash number is equal to the hash string variable which we initialized before. Guess and hex digest which basically may, turns it into a hexadecimal number then return guess two four let it go to four if equal to four leading zeros so to sum up what we did here we first off we encoded our last proof and our proof number then we changed the encoded value to a 256 bit string and then changed it to a hexadecimal value. And here we just return the Boolean value depending on the generated hexadecimal value of the hash does indeed have four leading zeros. So if this is satisfied, we're going to have zero. We're going to return zero. If it's not, we're going to return false. Okay, latest block. So our latest block function is a property that helps identify the last block of the blockchain. So it's going to be return current dot chain minus one. It just what, what this does is that it basically just returns the position of the latest block. Just a simple function. Our mining function is going to be the function that implements the mining aspect of the coin itself. So first off, we need to create the data for the new transaction. So let's do it. So current dot new transactions. 
we're going to set the transmitter to zero and i will explain why this is happening we're going to set the receiver to details minor let's just call it that for now and the amount to let's say the amount you're gonna get while from mining so let's just say two our reward is two coins and this is going to be the last block is equal to current latest block last mining number is equal to the last block mining number last block dot mining number we are also going to have the mining number itself and we're going to set it to the current dot proof of work and the last one pass the last mining number to it we're going to also have the last hash and we're going to set it to last block dot calculate its hash and block is equal to current build blockchain current it's not block is going to be build block and we're going to pass our mining number and our last hash number so once we have this we're going to return was okay so explaining what's happening here what we did here is that we right here what we did was yep so what we did was that we created we're creating new data the data for the new transactions basically and this means that the transmitter, which is the who is the like the sender of the in, in the exchange, is equal to zero to indicate that this node has created a new block in the chain. The Rx, which is the um, receiver, is equal to the details of the miner. The, the miner details is basically the account who does the mining. And the amount is equal to the reward given for completing the mining operation on the coin, which we set to two. Then here we setting the last block variable to the current block of the chain. What we did here was that we uh, set the mining number, the, which is basically the mining number to the mining number generated by the proof of work function, which is here. We did, what we did here was that the last hash variable is set to the hash number of the current block generated by the calculate hash function and the block variable is set to the current block from the build block function and then we return the return the local variables of the block variable which is set to have the variable values of the build block function which was here okay now moving on to our create node method uh what, the create node method we're going to have these variables oh we forgot to add our variables to the mining mining method which is the current current and our latest block is going to be current as well let's just double check that all our parameters are there yep so our create node is going to have current as a parameter as well as the let's just call it addy which is basically the addition so current dot nodes dot add on to them the which we call the addy okay if that's done just return true and let us know all right so what we have here is 
We forgot to add our columns. Let's just add our columns right here. Arabic spacing for formatting purposes. Yeah. Add some spacing to make it more organized. Add some spacing here. And let's go on, move on to our last method. So the obtain block object. So this method is going to obtain the block object from the block data passed and it's just a simple return command so it's going to return the an object with the data passed to it to the function so we're going to have block underscore data of the position we're also going to have the block data we can add it to the mining number. We are also going to have one minute and we just add the comma. We're also going to have the block data of the previous hash. We're also going to have the block data of the transactions. Yep, use this and this and we forgot to put our quotation marks. Oh god. It's just transactions is done. Oh it is not. Let's just cut this again. Let's cut it and add this, add this, then paste it to make sure everything's working. We have our block data transactions, it's working perfectly fine. And for the last thing, we're going to have the block data. Um, was the last one it was timestamp yep so timestamp all right so timestamp is done let's just close our bracket and this way we'll be done with our second class and what's left is just to add the test the main to test our classes so yeah that's it let's move on to the main all right so we now need to test our code to make sure it's working first let's start by creating an instance of the blockchain basically our own blockchain for the coin let's let's just name it the assembly coin so let's just create, name it the assembly blockchain which is equal to an instance of our blockchain class done with that let's now add a print printing a statement to indicate that the mining process is about to begin which is, so print we just say um let's add some nice help yep, so star the star this. all right so this is one we're doing this for making our code more fancy so this happened okay so mining the assembly point is is about to begin. We just paste it. Oh, so we printed our statements. Let us print the assembly underscore blockchain dot. Let's print our print our chain information. Once that's done, let's Loves. Love is going to be equal to the assembly blockchain dot the latest block. It's more than our last mining number. is going to be our assembly mining number. 
so our last block dot mining number we also need the set the mining number and we're going to set it to the assembly blockchain assembly blockchain dot proof of work and let's have the last mining number okay so moving on let's create a new transaction on our blockchain so let's just do assembly let's call blockchain dot new transactions and let's say let's call the transmitter which is zero uh, we, don't, we don't need these we don't need the curly brackets yep the receiver let's just name him Ahmad and sending an amount of one coin transaction has been set let's now moving on let's getting the hash of our new transaction on the blockchain so let's get the hash last hash is equal to the last block dot calculate the hash number and let's just set the block to the assembly blockchain dot mining number And let's just print the statement to indicate that the mining process has been completed. So let's just add our quotation marks, paste our assembly, and just call it the assembly coin has been mined successfully. Let's just run this. Let's go print assembly coin assembly block check. All right, so let's just run our uh, test our me test our code. Let's run it and here we go we can see here as you can see we have our coin being mined and the new hashing number represented as a hexadecimal being appointed to the new block created which is this one so this is the logic and base uh, this is the basic logic and code behind the cryptocurrencies nowadays keep in mind that in today, with today's security and integrity standards our coin wouldn't be approved to be published due to its basic and simple security protocols implemented hence why in order to publish your cryptocurrency in the crypto market the logic behind the code is going to be the same, but more security protocols need to be implemented. So that's it for today's workshop. First, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to this workshop. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like on the video. And to stay up to date with more of our content, you can follow us on our social media. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.